do now? What do, you, what do you mean? We're both men. Well, I believe in non-traditional families. And we're brothers. My dad remarried, and my stepmother treats me terribly. My mom remarried, too. My stepdad barely tolerates me. So we're both outsiders in our own families. You know, we, we, we ought to make our own. Hey, I'll take care of you. How about it? In the whole wide world, there must be a place for us. Yes. Hey, I, well, no, let me, let me say it first. I, no, no, you don't have to say it because I, I also know. I, I, Lights fade. The words peace and love appear on the backdrop. <laughs> Scene five, the sodium cyanate. The fish candy. Potassium sorbate. <laughs> Please translate. A preservative. Yeah, you know, that's a lot. Is that okay? <laughs> Don't I seem fine? You might have something wrong with you, something invisible. Well, if you can't see it, there's no problem. The boss said this batch will take three months to ship. Who wants goods that arrive just before they expire? They keep working. The supervisor enters and speaks to Polar. Polar takes out a bag of white crystals, which he pours into the tin for the overflow. Mm. Hang on, what's that? <clears throat> Sodium chloride. Please translate. Don't you even know that? Salt. Oh, that's all right then. No, no, but that, that's a lot. Is that mm. okay? Did you know if you ate an entire bowl of salt, you'll die? Well, how do you know that? I'm a certified food technician. <laughs> what do you think I was doing? Because the man and woman have stopped working, in order to keep the belt moving, the chicken rips off its own wings and drumsticks and stuffs them into the tins. <laughs> All right, back to work. The chicken's panning itself. <laughs> you just said eating a bowl of salt would poison you. That was more than a bowl of salt. Would you eat a whole tin of fish just like that? I would. On its own? With rice and noodles, I guess. That's right. No one eats tin fish alone. It's far too salty. If anyone did that, they ought to take some responsibility for their health. <laughs> Aren't you a food technician? How could you push that responsibility onto the consumer? I'm also a lowly worker in a food camp, <laughs> getting paid a fixed wage to do a fixed set of things. Mm -hmm. This may look like a food preparation facility, but you're mistaken. All industries are now service industries. Did you see the free hotline number on every label? Some tins arrive too close to the expiration date, so we added preservatives. Someone phoned to say it's not salty enough, so we added salt. Some regions have a sweet tooth, so we add a little sodium sublimate, an artificial sweetener. This may just be a little fish cannery, but don't be fooled. Our product gets sent out all over the world. Really? How come I haven't seen these? In Taiwan. Polar produces a Taiwanese brand of mackerel. You've seen these, though. Oh my god, how did you get a hold of that? Oh god, I'm drooling at the sight. Hey, hand it over, hand it over. Oh my god. God. If you make the chicken rip off one more limb, I'm gonna stuff you into a can. Aren't chickens meant for people to eat? My kind eat people, too. Although my tribe has mostly been wiped out, I'm the only one left. The others were all killed by humans. Speaking of which. Ooh. 
been so long since I ate a person. Oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> you, let's get back to work. You ought to learn from the chicken spirit of sacrifice. <laughs> They're just brainless. <laughs> It was because of this tin that I got to know the chicken. I was a strapping young youth back then. My fur was, well, glossier than now. <laughs> when the company sent me to sea with a cargo. You can ship goods too? I have a shipping license. Wait, how would you get a shipping license like that in this godforsaken place? Haven't you ever heard of online classes, human? Every year, I deliver a batch of tin mackerel to Taiwan. They always sent me because I had a shipping license. But also, so outsiders would know our tinned mackerel was actually minced salmon. Not that anyone would taste the difference. I'd made my delivery and was on my way back to the hotel when suddenly, crash, bam! What? The chicken appeared, or the chicken entered my world. No, I should say, whew. There was a collision. You crashed into the chicken? The chicken crashed into me. Well, all right, don't say it was your fault. The chicken's brain was foggy. Hey, lab-grown chickens don't have brains. If I sent some mad scientist and made a chicken, especially <laughs> one with six wings and eight legs plus an IQ of 180, would you still dare to eat a chicken? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Their feed was made of obsolete lab-grown chickens. Your brain. Would not be much after eating that. They used to be the brightest and the brainiest. Anyway, the chicken had been working in the fast food industry for quite a while with every major brand, but its powers of recovery were slowing. So the lab was replacing it. When we met, it was on its last legs. I used my skills as a food technician to save it. But when it woke up and saw me, it wanted to die. I said, don't be scared. I'm just like you. I stared straight into its pupils so you, it could see I had an animal soul. Although it insists lab-grown chickens have no souls. You do have one, right? Otherwise, you're insulting my love for you. Who else has such a spirit of sacrifice? Hang on, what about your lover, the black bear? There are no black bears in Alaska. But you told me just, just a few days ago. Your lover, then, then he crashed down from above, then you started stroking him all over. I hardly know you. What do you care who I loved yesterday, today, or tomorrow? Um, I bought shares in this cannery after so many years here, and at last, the lab-grown chicken has agreed to marry me. The banquet's tomorrow. Hope the two of you will come to get your fill. Look, but I just, a few days ago, I really. I know. When we first met, he told me he was a thousand-year-old vampire who snatched sick children from hospitals to devour their life energies. I actually believed him. It's strange, though. He's always able to find some vulnerable organism. Who knows where that chicken came from? But it fulfills his savior complex. Hey, don't you think Polar buying shares in the cannery is a retaliation against humanity? I don't know, but they look good together. I mean, if he's taking revenge against humanity, then what about us? Are we retaliating against society? Are you going to the banquet? Uh, I've lost my appetite. No, well, you have to eat to stay alive. I think I'm going vegetarian. Hey, nowadays, tomatoes are spliced with fish genes, and potatoes make their own pesticides. Don't think too much about it. <laughs> no, if he wants to be a bear, let him. If he wants to be a vampire, let him. Just change him. The light changes to sunset. Oh, you're beautiful. That's just air pollution. Waste gas from the chemical plant. Oh. <laughs> but I'd rather believe it's natural beauty. Mm. Did you know there's someone who sees 44 sunsets in a day when he's sad? He lives on a very small planet. He only has to like move his chair a little to see another sunset. Mm -hmm. I don't know how sad I need to be to watch 44 sunsets. <laughs> well, are you sad now? Just homesick. <laughs> <laughs>
<coughs> you must have been working here a while. I suppose you'll be home soon? No, I'm just gonna go work somewhere else. Why? I don't know. Maybe this is what they call experiencing life. But aren't you homesick? I have to keep wandering so I can go on feeling homesick. <coughs> if you don't mind, I'd like to come wander with you. But you don't have a home. You have a home, so your wandering allows you to be homesick. I don't, so wandering will let me search for one. This is the end of the world. Long ago, when people reached a certain age, their families would put them on ice floes and let them drift out to sea. And I envy them. To have lived enough on a piece of ice that belongs to only me, floating on the empty ocean as it slowly melts and I sink to the bottom. The Arctic Sea is so cold, I die quickly. Fish and ponds would eat me, and my children would catch those fish, feed them to my grandchildren. Perfect. And now? Will there be any more beautiful scenery awaiting us? Have you seen the Northern Lights? Scene six, zoo story. At least roll over. You've been lying there so long. There's a mark on the ground. <clears throat> Your turn to meet the visitors today. I don't want to move. It was me yesterday, so it's you today. You have to take your turn. There aren't any visitors. Who said we have to meet visitors every day? Can they look at me lying down? What are you, a whore? <laughs> Not without a buyer. All right, all right. Ugh. Being a professional zoo animal means you need to train every day. Get up. You know, before an opera singer sets foot on stage, they have to do vocal exercises every day, 365 times a year. <laughs> an actor's defecation. Is I'm not an actor. You're playing a giant panda today. A polar bear tomorrow. We need a poo the day in the day after. How are you not an actor? They're all bears, and I actually am a giant panda. All right, let's not argue. Come on, practice. <laughs> okay, you know, to be an all-around zoo animal, you first have to be good at observation. Take monkeys. You have to study the way they walk, the angle they swing their arms, what they normally do. I, I, I know, and they're always picking fleas out of each other. Fleas? Yeah. That's right. Try it. Me? Do you see anyone else here? Of course, you. Oh. <laughs> wow, wow, that is awesome. I might cast you as a monkey next time. But I still have a body of a bear. You could be a gorilla. <gasps> oh, <laughs> and, and, and you? Ah, you know, I'm all talk. After all this time together, you haven't noticed I'm in charge of saying and you are in charge of doing? Oh. Anyways, I'm good at thinking. <laughs> Don't say that. Ah, uh, enough fun and games. I'm going out. Where to? Need to sort, need to sort out our shitty household registration. The chicken can keep you company. Chicken! Chicken! Uh, isn't this our home? You know, what management said to me, only a husband and wife are allowed to own the zoo. We're just three unrelated tenants. But the landlord got on the immortal ship. And the immortal ships hit an iceberg and sank. Chicken! Chicken! Ah, come here. Panda can be on his own. The last room chicken enters in a large coat. <laughs> it almost looks dead. <laughs> uh, can I do anything for you? Uh, if you see polar while you're out, tell him I love him. 
She abandoned you. Are you still talking like that? You don't understand. The girl you met after me, she'd been thrown out by her family. At the age of 16, she weighed under five stone and- All right, all right, enough. I don't want to hear anymore. The main thing is he abandoned you, and that's why we brought you here. It doesn't matter that he doesn't love me. You see now that I love him. I don't care if you love him, or she loves him, or she loves you, or you love her. I'm going to deal with this management in a minute. I'll persuade them. We need to own this zoo. Let's rehearse. I'll make an official come by later, and I'll tell him that I'm responsible for a retard and a cripple. Yeah, <laughs> how hard it is to survive, and so on and uh, so forth. I, I thought I was your partner. Is it? You look more like a retard. <laughs> and you, chicken, open your coat. The chicken opened his coat to reveal its deformed body, gaping wounds where the six wings and eight legs used to be. Right. <laughs> chicken, repeat after me. <laughs> Sir or madam, look, this is my body. It's been ruined, but I don't hate society and ask nothing of it. All I want is a home so the three of us can go on living safely. Fine, I should do it. Let the chicken pull your coat together. It's exposing too much, maybe counterproductive. <laughs> what does this have to do with our family? Who cares? These days, you have to appeal to people's emotions. It doesn't matter. I'll be dead soon. I'm just glad I can help you out a little. You see, even she can say so. This is wrong. If I'd known, I, I'd never have come with you. Well, feel free to go back and see how many people come with you. See your ignorant battle stick works. Go uh, on. I, 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 Chicken doesn't have a, a leg to stand on. What should we do? Uh, uh, think of something nice, like the other zoo we visited. What about them? Remember when we saw the herd of zebra, perfectly motionless, looking at something? Why do you think that was, Chicken? I don't know. They were looking at the distant savanna, oh. preparing to stampede in that direction. There was no savanna there. All I saw in front of them was a petting zoo. Lots of astroturf, but no savannah. I, I'm, I'm sure. Oh, please, don't you have some in, in, uh, imaginations? Um. You're no fun. <laughs> they were standing so upright, looking directly ahead. You could see a vast stretch of glossy green grass. Are you marks? Get set. Go. <laughs> Use your imagination. Did they even remember how to run? I thought I remember how to swim, but then I realized I could only float. Drifting from here to there. I used to ask my mom where our hometown was, but she kept saying she forgot. I guess eating bamboo and sleeping all day makes you stupid. <laughs> well, the first thing I remember is opening my eyes and seeing a man in a lab coat. And then horror. I've never thought about this. And now you're about to die. That's why we could do. All we could do was find a zoo to lock us up, where people could look at us. At least we're self-employed. How else would we be able to get out? Oh, it's dangerous out there. They take what they can and get from you, and then they toss you out. Just look at me. Actually, I was lying about going out. This is our last day here. The zoo is being closed down. Why? Because a godforsaken place like this doesn't need a zoo. The three of us don't have the right legal documents to stake a claim to this place. But we'll They're have coming to shut us down tomorrow. But we'll have to this place. Another factory, I guess. Let's enjoy our last moments here. Various bits of zoo paraphernalia appear. Hanging rings, oh. springboards, hamster wheels. The panda is thrilled. The chicken comes up in this reminder of the past. They play. It's like kindergarten. Don't come join us! Play! The chicken.
can abruptly explode and die, leaving a pile of mincemeat on the ground. That's the faith that wa awaits us all. <laughs> now, don't bother. The chicken gone. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> you should eat it. Then the chicken will always live on the inside of your body. The panda starts eating the meat. A dark cloud drifts in. On the cloud is an immortal tortoise. Uh, I, I'm an immortal tortoise. Oh, sir, are, are you here to save the chicken? Oh, that's brilliant. Chicken, your salvation is here. Panda realizes he's eating the chicken and spits out what's in his mouth. Yeah. It's too late for that. Sir, have you come to join us with your mystical powers? We should be able to count as a family. My children, there's only you left now. Is the tortoise sending us a message? <laughs> <laughs> the immortal tortoise spews up plastic bags. <laughs> 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 His flesh is all soft, we need the shell. Yeah, that's why he needed a shell. Don't touch him! The woman paddles in on the float. <laughs> she is dressed like a warrior with protective headgear and a fulva tube around her waist. There are heavy metals in the blood of all the sea creatures now. It'd be bad for you. Who are you? Trash collector. Why are you collecting trash? Someone has to do it. Spotting the mincemeat, the woman reaches for her fulva tube. No, 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 no need. The chicken is with us. Just the immortal, please. She hoovers up the immortal and drags him off. And then, what? Where will he go? Oh, they're all over there. Oh, so many of them. Now what? Will they disappear on their own? I don't know. Anyway, someone has to collect the trash. Oh, hey, you know, you two should get away as soon as you can. The ice caps have melted, the sea levels are rising. All this is going to be underwater. Metal cages and a zoo signboard drift by. <laughs> the panda wants to grab them, but the duck stops him. It doesn't matter. Someone will be here to collect the trash. Don't leave me. Don't leave That's me. Welcome all. I'll be your tour guide today. My name? Uh, <laughs> that's not important. It, it, to be honest, I've forgotten. It's been too long since anyone called me a 
You. Quiet. This is a museum. Behave. Now, museums aren't just about collecting things. You have to lay them out attractively. No way, that's shop windows. <laughs> you have to look at history, aesthetics, cultural background. Understand? Never mind, you will by the end of my speech. Now, our first exhibit is the black bear from the Ice Age. What? There were no black bears in the Ice Age, only pandas? Wait, who's the guide, you or me? Oh, you're a biologist. Sure, whatever, I'll make a note. Anyways, I have a story about the black bear. You perked up, didn't you, when I said story, huh? All right, this will blow your mind. This black bear looks fierce, but it's his wife who wears the pants. You know, half his size, but she beat him flat when it came to hunting or fishing. He filled his belly with discarded, tra trails at the t discarded tails at the market. And she was furious. Oh, it makes me look bad when you eat other people's leftovers. She threw three fish tails at him. Your rations. Oh, couldn't you give me the heads too? No, I'll need them for my accounts to keep track of my calorie intake. The cupboards were full of stinking fish heads. Pair after pair of eyes staring down at him <clears throat> when he complained again. His wife grabbed a handful and stuffed them down his throat. Go ahead. I hope you choke. But he really did choke. As he died, he heard his wife sobbing. I'm sorry. I won't do that again. That's why he looked so shocked. <laughs> what do you mean you don't understand? This is a cautionary tale warning us to, what? No, not a cautionary fable, a cautionary tale. Anyone want to touch him? Don't worry, he's, he's, he's dead. See, see? Sit there eating bamboo. Sorry, I can only grow grand, can't grow grand bamboo in this godforsaken place. Yes, biologist, you have another question. <laughs> what? Pandas eat meat and have been known to attack humans. Don't repeat that. Hey, you see that we have you're making the children cry. Wait, hang on. The show is R-rated. Where did those little bastards come from? Hey, hey, parents, if you can't, if you can't keep silent your kids, just put your hands around their neck and squeeze them very tight and, <laughs> and take them outside to play. Like, we have a cafe here, all fair trade and whatnot, bougie enough for you. <laughs> you want a voucher? Have two. Okay, okay, three. Yes, your child can have fruit juice, all right. All freshly squeezed, organic. Don't ask me for the organic certification. Excellent. Goodbye. <sighs> Never been one for children. Too many responsibilities. All right, where was I? Uh, hey, biologist, stop interrupting. If you're a real biologist, why aren't you out working to save humanity? Humanity is dying, didn't you know? Right, one more word out of you, and you can take over this tour. Ah, and now we come to this little duck. Isn't he odd looking? <laughs> Actually, he's a helmet. A safety helmet. You ever heard of those? What about a scooter? No? Have times changed that fast? Right, it's a vehicle about this long. Didn't go too fast, but oh, so romantic. Now, in Taiwan, we called it chasing the wind. Riding along, human wrapped around machine. It was really dangerous. That's why we needed these helmets. Oh, there was a safety film. A watermelon getting smashed, bright red flesh everywhere. I always felt bad for the watermelon. Anyway, <laughs> safety helmet. Go ahead, you check. It's BPH free. It won't choke you a bit. 
Okay, enough <laughs> nostalgia. That's what happens when you get old. He checks the expiration date on the cat. October, March, last June. Okay, this one's the oldest. Best eat it first. He opens the tin of mackerel and digs into it with his fingers. Mmm. Mmm. Revolting. <laughs> no idea why people like this stuff in olden times. Turns your tongue red, but mm, something about the taste goes straight to your brain. <laughs> Don't you think so? Don't ignore me, dude. You're all I have left. Who are you talking to? Whoever will pay attention. You don't respect us as individuals. Why should we pay attention to you? Who's talking to me now, then? Anyone? You, Thumb? You're the biggest. Which Thumb? God, you guys. As soon as I gave you personalities, you started fighting. I'm so bored. I'm so bored I taught myself ventriloquism. Tragic. <laughs> Impressive. How did you manage that? I said shut up! I give myself an 85 for today. Would have been 90 if not for the biologist and those little bastards. God, I have to work harder at the ending. I'm always dragging. But then no matter what I say, they don't understand, so who cares? I was the only human being still alive. I'm the authority. Look, I'm trying to dredge up deep memories and turn them into knowledge. Don't you think so? So, 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 so. Don't you think so? So, 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 so. So? So, so, so. Stop saying so! So, 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 so. See how hard it is to connect with people? I can't even talk to myself. A conversation needs some sort of order as well as thought. In elementary school, I made a phone out of paper cups and string. Now, the problem was I couldn't run as fast as sound waves. I'd speak into one end, but the sound would be gone by the time I ran to the other. I tried putting one end to either ear. Hello? Hello? How are you? Fine, thanks. I didn't know what else to say. Like, some kind of psychologist test. Morning. How are you? Nice weather. Yes. Have a good day. You too. Going up? Yes, you too. Yes. A4? Yes, thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. Fuck. This guy sat right next to me at work for nine. And, and, and that was the crap we would say to each other in the, in the elevator every morning. Never said a word in the office. He runs the finger around the tin, sucking up every drop mm. of gravy. Tin food really is amazing. Do you know it's been around since 1810? Though the opener wasn't invented until 1858. <laughs> Which means for 40 years, you had to smash cans open by force. And wouldn't gravy splatter everywhere? But that's the best part. He looks at the funeral banner above the pyramid of cans. Granny Wynn, rest in peace. <laughs> it's not like you could have eaten these anyway. Might as well let me have them. Besides, they're inedible. You'd be rolling them into a grave. He counts the cans remaining in the pyramid. How many days left? I can't be silent. When it's quiet, I... No! I won't crumble, I won't. If I get up, give up, I've lost. They're out there, waiting for you to give up. You can't. You can't. And start with, I used to hope this was a dream. But a few days passed. I still got hungry. Still get morning wood. <laughs> it's touching, really. And I can have a blank whenever I want. I used to be shy, silly, but... Now I do it whenever. But I feel sad after. Have I become an animal? There isn't anyone around to prove I'm a person. Can I certify myself human, or, or is that invalid? I thought about leaving this place, but I, I don't know how to swim. As for how I got here in the first place, I can't remember. In movies, Shipwreck victims always know Morse code and how to rub two sticks for fire. I thought about ending it all. Just take the sharp edge of an, of an open can and... It's so easy to die. That thought scares me into going on living. 
After all, the entire hope of humanity rests on me surviving, doesn't it? I have to keep going until dinosaurs or aliens find me. I have to leave a record. Isn't that why there were cave paintings? When I was little, I wanted to be a guide. The one time we went to, a, to the planetarium, uh, our guide was just out of college. And when he said Pluto was no longer a planet, there was a catch to his voice. I said, Pluto sounded lonely. I wanted to be a spaceman so I could go visit Pluto. I got the tour guide's address and wrote him letters. He was like a big brother. Then he wrote, has your school switched to summer uniforms yet? Open bracket, boys wore shorts at your school, don't they? Close bracket. If they do, please send me a photo. I had no idea what he meant. I didn't reply. Maybe if I had, I'd have become an astronaut, watched from space as the Earth got destroyed. I ended up on my own anyway. The man shows himself that is startled away by ocean waves. No, no. I've seen inception. I know what that means. White noise. It, it calms people down. That, that, that's a scientific fact. He gets out a crystal wave his head and cues it to face static. This is white noise. No batteries. This is a crystal radio. Google it. I can't. You know, when I made this, I had some crazy idea I'd hear the news, but it's only been white noise. I'm not that disappointed. Maybe you need hope to be disappointed. This feels like a relic of civilization. Anyway, it calms me down. He dozes off. The radio crackles to life. Do you repent? What did you say? Do you repent? Who are you? Do you repent? My god, a voice! A voice! Do you repent? Wait, who are you? Are there other people there? Do you repent? Wait. This isn't a walkie-talkie, you can't do it. Do you repent? Do you repeat? Do you repent? Do you repent? Do you repent? I... I don't. I don't! I, I haven't done anything! All right, sometimes in public toilets, if I leave a floater that won't flush, I just leave it. But, <laughs> but only when I was in a hurry. And anyway, other people left piss stains. Do you repent? Why? Does someone need a kidney? Do you repent? I know what you're asking. The colleague I said good morning to. Then in the evening, the usual. Rough day. Get some rest. Thanks. You too. Suddenly I wanted to know about his private life. He sat at the next desk eight hours a day, yet I had no idea what he was like outside work. I followed him to a bar. How boring. A guy gets off work and goes to a bar. Lots of people slapped him on the shoulder and said, hello, like he was a regular. I thought I'd order a beer, pretend I was there by coincidence. I get to know him a bit. But he was in the bathroom a long time. A few beers later, I was about to give up and head home. And then I spotted her. Slim. Long black hair, backless red dress, black high heels, just the way I like them. I offered her a drink. She didn't even pretend to refuse. She reached for the glass and my stomach flipped over. Now my colleague had a hairy mole on his right hand. I would noticed it every day when we pressed the elevator button. I sat next to that hand and here it was, a hairy mole. If you're gonna dress up as a woman, wouldn't you cover up the hairy mole? He was too drunk to recognize me. This was the first time I was seeing his true self. The bartender kept looking at us. I was talking nonsense. A few more drinks, and he was reeling. He said he, he, said he needed to go to the loo. I went with him. Stood there as he got his dick out. What, haven't you seen one of these before? I shoved him into the cubicle. Now, I want to make it clear, nothing happened. I'm not interested in men. I just got carried away. So I got his panties off. 
black lace, you know. Tied his hands together. I took off my socks, stuffed one in his mouth, and hung the other off his dick. Got my iPhone out and took a picture. I think it was pretty nice of me to cover his dick and crop out his face. So my final jab. See you tomorrow. That's when I realized who I was. Too late. So I got to work extra early the next morning. Hung around outside, but he never showed up. Went to my desk, and there he was. He had come even earlier than me. I saw him tense up as I approached. I said, good morning, casual as anything. Shame not to bump into you in the elevator this morning. He muttered, yes, yes. I never said a word about the photo. Still, he wasn't doing well. One day, he fainted during a meeting. We were told he couldn't cope with the city, had an ulcer from the stress. He went back to his hometown. How could someone like him survive in a small village? He could be himself in the city, but also had to worry about being found out. Was that more painful than going home and pretending he didn't want what he wanted? Anyway, I never saw him again. Do you repent? That's the worst thing I ever did in my life. At the end of the day, it wasn't so terrible. I didn't threaten him, didn't show him that picture, didn't show that picture to anyone. It was just a prank. Like his nerves were too weak. Do you repent? Yes, I repent. I repent. Of course I repent. Otherwise, I wouldn't have said all that. <coughs> say something. Is the signal gone? Static. Please say something. Please. When I was little, my grandmother would tap a TV like this. Come on, come on. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Do you repent? Yes, yes, keep asking. Do you repent? Women. I miss women. Lying between their thighs. Made me happy as a tin mackerel. Shame I'll never see another woman. I had two wives, divorced them both. They were called Candy and Mandy. No, that's not right. Oh, I forgot, I'd forgotten their names. Okay, let's call them 36B and 36D. What, that's how I remember people. 36B got pregnant three times with me. Lost them all. I was young and didn't like Conley's. The first one was in our third year of college. <clears throat> it took three months for us to realize something was wrong. We pulled our wages from our part-time jobs and took it to the gynae. The doctor asked if she wanted to get rid of it, like, like he'd done it a million times before. I felt massively guilty. Did everything I could to take care of her. The next time was just before graduation. And working backwards, I was sure I had a condom on, but they aren't 100%. I had military service and no job yet. We talked it over and she decided to get rid of it. After the army, I worked for three years and saved up some money. It seemed like time. I proposed. I didn't feel overjoyed the way I expected. It was just sort of exhaustion. So it was time. I never cheated on her. All lovers become like husband and wife after enough time. One day, I got home from work and there, she, there was a trail of blood. I found her in the bathroom crying. She said, I lost a child. I looked down and the cord, there was this umbilical cord hanging out of her, chunks of blood, and a toilet bowl surrounded by red liquid my poor child. I'm not proud of this. I vomited all over the floor. In the end, 36B phoned for the ambulance to come get both of us. She looked at me dully as if she could see those three unfortunate children in me. Our relationship died along with them. Two years later, I met 38D. Can't remember how or how we split up. Do you repent? If I could ever meet someone else, I, I'd love her so much. 
my poor children. Do you repent? I've told you everything. What do you want? Look, I don't think you're a good person. I suppose you've never done anything illegal. Maybe run a red light or littering or kicking a stray dog. Maybe you saw a blind person and walk, who walked in circles and you just walked by. Got too much change on the, counter, uh, on the corner store and just kept it. You know very well the counter staff have to make up the difference. You go to all sorts of protests just because your friends are going. Do you even know what they're, they're arguing for? You have enough to eat and drink. Anyone who, you, who doesn't agree with you is trash, even though you also say all human beings are worthy of respect. But deep down, you know they're scum. You bring your own bags when you go shopping to save the planet. You don't smoke unless you've asked everyone in a 15-yard radius. You pay your taxes on time. Also, your mortgage and your car payments. You get to work on time and don't complain if you, have, if you get to work late. You donate money to African orphans at regular intervals. All in all, not a good person and not a bad person. Just an ordinary person, like me, perfectly normal. But then why am I all by myself? If someone could come, anyone, I'd love you with all the affection of all humanity. Do you repent? Haven't I repented enough? Who are you? Show yourself. If you have the balls, show yourself. Talk to my face. Hit me. T tell me what's wrong with me. Do you repent? You're just a recorded message. Why am I saying so much? <laughs> Something shiny. <sighs> oh, an open can. All right, I'll collect the trash. Otherwise, someone might cut themselves. I might cut myself. No tetanus shots here. <gasps> Something else shiny over here. Another can? A crystal? Oh, I could make another radio. Calming white noise. <gasps> oh, a cell phone! I <laughs> never thought I'd see one of these. Now I can dial 911. I'll get rescued. It's dead. And there's no 911 anymore. It's just me left. Please. Please, someone come from somewhere. Anyone at all.
is going to introduce them. Hello. Are we ready to start or are we waiting? Um, for people to come in. We can start. Okay. Hi, um, I'm Melissa Wong. So I'm moderating a very short discussion of the panel today. I heard that we have 10 minutes. Um, so first, um, introducing the playwright Wei Yujia, right, from Taiwan. And it's your first time in the US or, yes? Yeah, so Wei Yujia is a very prolific playwright. I'm just trying to look for her um, a, you know, to make sure that I have uh, her, her information right here, so I'm not misrepresenting her. So uh, Yu Chia, you can see from your uh, program, Study Playwriting at Taiwan University's Dramas Department, and she won an award for the play that we just heard, 2014 Taiwanese Literature Award for Playwriting, amongst other um, awards that you can read for yourselves in the um, book. And um, Jeremy Tiang is a um, translator, novelist, playwright, right? And um, he recently um, published his first novel, State of Emergency, by um, Epigram Books. And he's translated many Chinese plays and novels and won many prestigious awards as well, which you can read in the booklet. All right. Um, so I have, because of the restrictions in time, I would like to ask a question that pertains to both Jeremy and Yuchia's work. Um, I, Yucha, when you heard the play in English, um, does it give you any new insights um, of the way that you've thought about your own work before? And Jeremy, in terms of translating um, the play, are there some things that you found that couldn't, uh, wasn't as translatable as you'd like? Are, are there also new <coughs> things that um, you think an English translation might have? Um, given to the play and the way we understand the play as an English audience. Hello, <laughs> I should say sorry for my poor English, so I will speak in Chinese and <laughs> Jeremy will help me to translate. Melissa讲的问题就是我自己的感觉是在尤其是在排练的时候我就是听了英文就是对对对有有我知道什么新的感想对就是 <laughs> 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 在文化冲击上面就是昨天有跟你聊到就觉得有些概念因为那个蛮台湾的很多台湾的背景然后我就有点担心是不是观众会听不懂可是后来发现应该大部分那个感受还是在那我就觉得可以成立这样 uh, so there was a certain amount of cultural clash. Uh, Yu Jia was very aware that the background of this play is very Taiwanese, and she wasn't sure if the audience would be able to receive it. But having seen the results, she feels that most of it did come across, and she's happy with it. Um, what was the question again? I'm just thinking about your process of translation and... Well, uh, as Yu Jia says, it's a very Taiwanese play. Um, there are many elements of it. Um, that come out of that culture, but at the same time, themes such as climate change, war, the end of the world, and all humanity are pretty universal. <laughs> um, so I emphasize those, and the more specific elements of it, such as the black bear, which is an animal native to Taiwan, weren't as important. It's more that it's a bear that has become extinct, and that's all you need to know. Um, similarly, Specific details, such as at Taiwanese funerals, you get tins of canned food, piles of canned food, and that's what that pile is at the end, and that's what he's eating to survive. That might not have come across, but I also don't think it matters. Um, as long as the, the story is clear, and I think it was, hopefully. Um, yeah, so the play was at once absurd and farcical and funny and dark and and pessimistic, right? I'm just wondering also what the audience got out of the play. Um, perhaps just opening the floor up for questions since we have a limited amount of time. Any questions for the translator and the playwright? Okay. I, I wonder about the choice of characters that, that the author have chosen a duck and a panda. And I wonder, you know, I, I may I, I may get the hint of a panda, but the duck is, is if, 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 
you can add like to that. 那那我我我讲中文，请你翻译这样。就是那那个资料你有去查吗？对，就是其实那时候是那一年台湾的木栅动物园团团跟远远生下了一个小猫熊叫远仔，然后很多民众都很想去看远仔，那就变成很那个远仔小熊猫很很红，然后那个鸭子就是那个你知道吗？对。呃、uh, ，So there were a couple of current events that inspired this. Um, the year the play was written. The pandas in Taiwan Zoo had a baby cub, and that caused a great stir, and everyone came to see the panda cub. Um, and the same year, the giant rubber duck—it was an art installation—was、um, going round the world and came to Taiwan, and that caused a lot of media interest. So the Taiwanese audience would have got that this was what was being referred to. Um, any other questions for the playwright? Yes. Hi. I was just really interested between the relationship between the animals and kind of like their commodified representations in the human world, especially with the duck. I'm thinking of how there was there's the duck itself, and then there's the rubber the rubber duck and the ring of the kind of inflatable float. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of. Probe into that relationship between objects and like animals and their representation in the human world because for me that was very rich. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> 就是因为就是那个所所有动物在里面其实都只是一个比喻，就不是真正的动物。然后尤其是鸭子，它就黄。黄鸭它是那个艺术品嘛，所以它其实代表只是一种人们追求或者是的概念。然后当然它有它自，就是我赋予了，就是拟人化，让它去，比方说它的想想要拥有一个动物园或想要有一个自己的归属感的那种感觉。呃、uh, ，So there are no real animals in the play. They are all symbols.、Um, And in this case, they represent things that human beings pursue. But of course, she's anthropologized them so that they gain emotions of their own, such as the desire to find a place to call home. Hi, I just want to also know that I really enjoyed the play.、Um, I don't know if I'm mistaken, but、um, is a polar bear not in Alaska? And does she know that? Is that done intentionally? I don't think polar bears are in Alaska, right? So it's a joke. Just no, I, I just want to make. Oh, oh, oh! All things in the play is not true. No, no, I understand.、Yeah. I don't know. That was I don't know if there was that uh, by uh, choice that you know they have nowhere to go but to go to Alaska. Oh, because it's his. It's I want to set it in a very distant place, and there are factories. Yes, yes, yes. He said Alaska, but there's no factory. She knows that.、Um, <laughs> she just wanted to think of a very remote place, and then the idea that the polar bear would go there. <laughs> and there's a fish factory. <laughs> Any final questions for the playwright? Yes. Mike,、um, um, both of you, what your reactions of the audience's reactions were? Were there moments that played? Differently, or where the audience reacted differently to how you envisaged, or moments that came across really differently in the English translation as opposed to the original. If you could reflect on the process. Um, 就是其实跟台湾的差不多，就是在台湾的时候，这个出戏演出本来就有的人说看得很难过，有的人说看得很好笑，然后有的人是在很好笑的时候觉得很难过。那我觉得都很好。那不要是没有感觉就好，因为没有感觉的话，我也没办法退你钱这样子。Uh, so the audience today responded about the same as the Taiwanese audience, which was some people were very amused and some people were very sad, and some people were sad in the midst of their amusement.、Um, but Yuqia is happy with all of these reactions. The worst thing would be if there was no reaction at all, because even if you didn't feel anything, she isn't able to give you a refund. <laughs>
thank you so much um, to the playwright and to uh, the translator, Jeremy and Yuchia. And thank you so much for coming. Yeah, that's not. 